In this video, we're going to continue to look at hypothesis testing for population means where sigma is unknown, and in this case, we'll look at two-tailed examples. I did not include that summary page in this video, again, because we are following the same steps that we did in the last video, because it's the same process, it's just a two-tailed test. So we have a question, the meatpacking department of a grocery store chain packs ground beef in two pound portions. Supervisors are concerned that their machine is no longer packaging the beef to the required specifications. To test the claim that the mean weight of ground beef is not two, so again, it's supposed to be two, so that means mu is two, and that means my null hypothesis is that mu is two. The alternative hypothesis is that it's not two pounds. So they're not indicating a direction. They're just saying, we don't think two is right. So that is the alternative hypothesis. And that is what makes this a two-tailed test. The supervisors calculate the mean weight for a simple random sample of 20 packages of beef. The sample mean, X bar, is 2.1 pounds with a standard deviation of 0 0.33 pounds. Is there sufficient evidence at the 0 0.01 level of significance to show the machine is not working properly? And then assume the weights are normally distributed. So here's my summary and step one, but let's do step zero first. Check conditions, is it a random sample? Yes, it is. we are told in the question that it's a random sample. And sigma is unknown, that's correct. And Although n is less than 30 because n is 20, we are told that the weights are normally distributed, so conditions are met. Again, we have already done step one, our null and alternative hypotheses, so let's go straight to our calculations. Remember our test statistic, our t-score is still the same t-score we found previously. Keeping in mind, we want to keep parentheses around the top and on the bottom. And we end up with a t-score of 1.355. We, we find our critical value for a rejection region. And for a two-tailed test, remember that we can actually use t.inverse.2t. Um, and then since n is 20, the degrees of freedom is 19. So one less than 20. And we end up with positive and, my, uh, positive and negative 2.861. So again, that means way down here is negative 2.861, and then up here is positive 2.861. And again, the reason that we have two of them is because there is alpha over two on the left and there's alpha over two on the right. Again, our p-value, this is the most complicated one. Our p-value is we need, um, here's my, t-score of 1.355, so if zero is right here in the middle, 1.355 is somewhere in here. So clearly using the rejection region, we're going to say fail to reject because it's clearly not in the rejection region. Um, but to find the t, I'm sorry, the p-value, I'm going to take this value to the right, and then I'm simply just duplicating it because it's that much to the left as well. So that's why I'm just taking two. Now remember, if this guy is positive, I'm going to find the area to the right and double it. If this guy is negative, I would find the area to the left and double it. And the reason for that is of course, hopefully you understand that, if I tried to find the area to the left of this, that's clearly over 50%. And then if I double it, it's over 100%, and that is impossible to have a probability greater than 100%. So again, what's our conclusion? We already talked about the fact that uh, our t-score does not fall in the rejection region. Um, but in addition, we can see that our p-value is clearly greater than our alpha level, and therefore we fail to reject the null. This means the evidence collected is not strong enough. Again, we always go back to our alternative, we're saying this is true or this is not true. So if we fail to reject, there's not enough evidence to say the alternative is true. 
so there's not strong enough evidence at the 0.01 level of significance to say the machine is working improperly. Again, a corresponding interval, we're going to follow the same process we did before. We're going to use that same critical value that we used for the rejection region. And remember, this one, there's, it's still going to match up with the 0 0.01. So when you do a one-tailed test, that's where things get a little crazy because you essentially have to duplicate alpha in each tail. Here, we've already taken alpha over two in each tail. So we find, doing the work here, that we end up with 1.889 to 2.311. Remember when you write your conclusion, you should be talking about what do those values mean and then talk about whether the hypothesized value falls in the interval. So I'm 99% confident the average weight of meat packed is between 1.9 and 2.3 pounds. And since two is in there, two is an acceptable measure. Um, it supports failing to reject the null hypothesis. Let's take a look now at the two-tailed test in Excel. As you can see, I'm using the exact same spreadsheet as I did for the last video. Um, I'm just going to add this column. So again, what's the critical value? Remember, when we're finding the critical value, we need a two-tailed critical value. So I don't have to worry about taking alpha divided by two in the T model because Excel actually has a T inverse two-tail. And so all I have to do is T inverse two-tail and then alpha and then degrees of freedom, which is N minus one. For the P-value, remember, and this one, this one's a little tricky. So before I show you what I've done, Let's recall, if my T-score were negative, then I would need to find the area to the left of the negative T-score, and then I would take it times two. So if it were negative, I would take two times area to the left. However, if it were positive, I would have to find the area to the right and take it times two. So if it were positive, I'm going to take two times the area to the right. Now, when I did this with the normal model, I said, I used an if then. If t-score is negative, do this. If it's positive, do that. For this one, I chose to be a little more savvy and say, let's just do t-dist right, two times t-dist right, and then always make sure that I'm using the positive t-score. So I just use the absolute value to say, no matter what the t-score is, I want it to be positive. And then I'm going to take t-dist right of that, time, comma, degrees of freedom, and then I'm going to take it times two. And so that's going to give me my p-value. So it's up to you. You can use the if-then statement we used in the normal model, or use this. I'm using the same if then for the conclusion. If P is less than alpha, reject, otherwise fail to reject. And then of course, I'm still, uh, sorry, I'm using the margin of error that comes from taking this critical value as opposed to this critical value, multiplied by the standard deviation divided by the square root of N. And then again, the center is still the sample mean always and that gives me my interval. And so if you compare these values that we have found in Excel to the values that we found by hand, we can see that those are all the same. Coming up next, we're going to take a look at hypothesis testing for population proportions, one-tailed.